He can be heard weekdays during afternoon drive all over the nation on the Infinity Sports Network. And uh, originally, we were going to have Galbon just during football seasons. But then we've gone through a nice summer here. We enjoy talking to Gelby on Wednesdays. And now, all of a sudden, it is football season again. We're we're kind of headfirst into football. You know, listen, I was talking to him off the air. We're still celebrating the Panther Stanley Cup victory that was just, you know, end of June. And uh, and obviously, Gelb, I don't know if you uh, talked about it on your show, but we're celebrating the Miami Heat's NBA championship. Um, as you know, they won the Summer League. I'm sure you've oh. talked about that. What, 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 what are you laughing at? So a couple of championships this summer, you know, for the, uh, for the South Florida market. But then you've got I, Dolphins. I, Dolphins practice started today. ACC media days are going on. Mario Cristobal made the media rounds today, and and but we're just kind of soaking in football, but still celebrating our championships, plural. Well, I, I thought you were kind of doing like a look back, like oh, so many years ago the Heat won a championship. You know, good summer content. I was not aware uh, that the Heat won the summer league championship. You weren't aware? Wow, no. I, I can't stand summer league. What? Oh, because your team didn't do well. I understand. No, I haven't. I don't. I don't even know. Like, I watched one or two of Bronny's games for about four seconds, and I'm like, yeah, I'm out. Summer league, waste of everybody's time. Two thumbs well, down. Couple of a uh, couple of championships here in South Florida uh, this summer. Panthers and Miami Heat. I don't know when they'll raise the banner for the the summer league, but uh, we will certainly mm -hmm. cover it here as the flagship station for Miami Heat basketball. Are you uh, are you full throttle into football, Gelb, now that uh, all the camps are opening? Yeah, uh, I also hate this time of the year as well, even though I love summer. But I'm at the point where it's just, okay, get us to the first week of the college football season then get us to week one of the NFL season. Because training camp in the preseason, yeah, you get the contract disputes and, and all that stuff. But only bad things could happen because people could get injured. And you'd hate to see someone season end before it even starts. Well, you talk about contracts. So you and I were talking off the air. Jordan Love says, we're not practicing, right? I'm not practicing for the Packers until I have a brand new contract. Two is out there today. He's throwing the ball, not necessarily practice. I'm sorry, he's not throwing the ball. He's handing off the ball. He's not necessarily practicing, but he's there. But he wants a new contract as well. So what do you make of what's going on there? First of all, would you give a big contract to Jordan Love? And would you give a big new contract to Tua if you're the Dolphins? So I I've talked about this before on my show. Right now, I would not give Jordan Love a new contract extension. I would not give Tua a new contract extension. I would want to see more before you give those big deals. But I'm also cognizant of the fact that Jordan Love is – right? The guy that Brian Gutekunst drafted to replace Aaron Rodgers. So the Packers really have no leverage and he threw 20 touchdowns or had 20 total touchdowns and one interception in the final eight games uh, of the regular season. Now, as for Tua, I, I, we've talked about this before, you know, two weeks ago before you took your nice big uh, vacation, Crowder and I were in the camp of, you don't pay Tua right now, but if I'm Tua, I look around, Trevor Lawrence got paid, Goff got paid, Jordan Love by the end of the week is going to get paid. Yeah, Tua would be an idiot if he actually does anything with the Dolphins in terms of in these drills and, and participating in these drills because all the other teams are doing it, so Tua should be able to say, yeah, now it's time to give me my money as well. Hey, Crowder, <clears throat> Crowder, Crowder's here as well. Look at this. Hey. Surprise appearance. I'm at Mitchell and Ness in Philadelphia. Oh, Is that where you are? Yeah. Where we had to, they let us create like a pivot, a pivot capsule and pick stuff out, and it was pretty cool. That's Very good the, story. I've uh, been there. That's the yeah. best gear. Like when DJ wants like a legit uni old or school. something, he loves the Mitchell and Ness stuff. Like, yeah, he's got like an old school Pippin Olympic jersey or something that's Mitchell and Ness. And I got it. Like I now I know the story of what Mitchell and Ness, like they're two old guys. One was a tennis player. One was a golfer. And they got together and they couldn't start a company by themselves. So they pulled their money together to start it. And it was all illegal before they had no licensing deals. So they were selling jerseys to rappers and stuff like almost under the table for cash. Like the story's crazy of what Mitchell huh. Ness really became. Yeah. So I got the whole history of it. it I didn't know that cool. they were based in Philly. Yes. It's uh, we're actually, I know the big storefront that, uh, that Zach's talking about, but there's also we're at the corporate building, which is like oh, an okay. old mansion. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. They, 
They're not hurting now. There needs to be no money pulled from Mitchell and Ness as we speak in 2024. Well, but, they're own they're own fanatics now, right? Michael Rubin yes. owns them. Yes, and they license every major sports league in the United States is there. So any jersey that is made has to go through them. It's it's wild what's what's about to happen with this so, company. So Crowder, you're around a lot of money right now. You want to just like grab a thousand dollars from me? You know, cover, <laughs> cover my expenses for this segment. <laughs> I, I asked Mo Bamba for a couple of dollars. He rode the train here. So I was like, oh, I don't know if you've hit the big contract yet, Mo. Um, Mo Bamba you know, on a train is a funny you know visual. Who was here, which was cool, was uh, Kyle uh, Apo- Aposo. Oh, the, pa- the Panthers. The Panthers. From guy. the Panthers. He was here. We sat down with him for like 15 minutes. He was like, yeah, you know, I have a great story. We got to sit down again. Didn't he but, just yeah. leave the Panthers too? Didn't he, he, didn't he sign somewhere else? Yeah, I don't even know. I should. He. he Allegedly, might not play hockey anymore. I'll give you that. Uh, well, I thought that was going to be the case after he won a cup because that was his whole idea of coming to the Panthers. But I thought he signed somewhere. Well, I don't think my... he signed anywhere yet. I think, no? uh, as far as you know, Crowder might have more uh, more background here that he he can or cannot share. But I believe he's still a free agent. Hmm. Yeah, one of my best friends from college is a massive Islanders fan. He used to play for the Islanders, and all of his computer passwords had to be centered around Kyle Oposo. Back in the day, in <laughs> so it was very easy to hack anything of his. You should have heard. It. Like we Some needed more beer for the frat. I knew the password, That's typed funny. it in, boom, got his bank account information. Hey, <laughs> me and Hawk were talking yesterday about how all our passwords are might not be in the best place. <laughs> I think mine's on a piece of paper in my wallet. <laughs> my, my sister Ignore berated me the face. other day because we, she was uh, sharing her screen, showing me something. She lives in Colorado. And then I showed her how I had stored all my passwords in my notes section. She goes, "That's like just heinous." That's actually goes, what I have. I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't want to make it. I didn't want to share that. But that's where I. I was showing Crowder. Yes, that's where I keep them. <laughs> yeah, Zach. I had to change my number because somebody stole my phone, and I had no. I I had no security on any app. So they started sending themselves money on Zelle. I had <laughs> nothing. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. You recently but- changed your number. No, about a year was, ago. Oh, yeah, probably yeah. about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Yeah, because I feel like anytime I, I text Crowder, he's like, new phone, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're tight. I got you as a nickname. You're in my phone is Gelby. And that's not And it's football no. season. You know Gelby's going to be reaching out to you a lot because football <laughs> season's gearing up. I, I'm surprised it's Gelby. I thought you were just going to write, like, cockroach, loud, obnoxious jackass <laughs> in that phone. No, that's it how might... Solana has you, Mark. <laughs> It might say New York behind your name, just so I, I just lock it in. I just bloviating know. loudmouth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Gail Park was off. But some of you brought about Tua, and I've swung a little bit, and we're on the same page. Like you don't have to pay him, why pay him? But almost like we're talking about with the market. You brought up golf. You brought up Tre- Tyler. I mean, uh, Trevor. You brought up now. Jordan Love's about to get a check. Now I want to say I am coming around because the market sets itself. If I can say I'm better than these guys. Yeah, you have to give me my money, which I understand both sides. But now I'm coming around. Oh man, give to a damn check. I, I think for him, he has all the leverage now. You know, it's all these other guys are getting paid, and some are better, some aren't. Right? I think we could have those discussions, but it's almost now disrespectful if the Dolphins don't pay him. But they've been disrespectful to him since they drafted him. It started with Brian Flores. That's my yeah. greater point with him. Like, okay, and then you could decide for yourself, is the disrespect warranted or not? But I think after last season, it's no longer warranted. Like, now you have to treat him as the fifth overall pick who has, again, yet to win a big game, yet to win a playoff game. I understand what the argument is against because Solana made it eloquently yesterday. Mm-hmm. But the truth of the matter is, He's pretty much delivered on what you need him to deliver on, which is be an accurate passer, throw record numbers, keep your receivers happy. Tyreek Hill loves them. Get mm-hmm. the best receiver maybe in the league, loves the quarterback. Like I'm watching that receiver show on Netflix and uh, man, uh, Devontae Adams. I mean, just hated Jimmy Garoppolo, hated him, made no bones about it. If Tyree Hill didn't like the quarterback, he would let you know. Devontae and, Adams was super clear. He's like, hey, they're paying me a lot of money. This guy can't get me the ball. Like, I'm not, I can't earn my money. Like, Tyreek Hill would not bide his time if he didn't love Tua. So all the things are there to give him his money. Let him, let him be the guy. So you brought up a great point with Tyreek Hill. Cause at first I thought it was like forced. And I'm like, huh, I don't know how genuine it is, but I do believe his love for Tua 
is genuine. But if you remember, Mike McDaniel, when he first got the job, went to Tua's charity event, and Tua was, like, blown away. Chris Greer, obviously, drafted uh, Tua Tunga by Loa. So I do believe if we shot up Tyree Kill with True Serum, that he would – everything he says publicly about Tua, he thinks it privately. But now with the below-market offer, not giving him a deal yet, how disingenuous maybe were Greer – and McDaniel about what they said. I'd be curious what their true thoughts are about Tua because you guys are right, even though I don't think you need to give him the deal right now, like if I was running the team, but when everyone else is getting paid and we've seen good quarterbacks get great money before, it's like, man, uh, like the only logical explanation is that they don't really believe in Tua. Who would you rather have right now? We had this conversation yesterday. Who would you rather have right now, Tua or Jordan Love? Jordan Love. Tua or... Who are we talking about yesterday? Golf. Matt Stafford. Oh, yeah. Tua or Matt Stafford? Uh, Matt Stafford. I think, uh, well, for the long term, it would be Tua, but for, for this year, it would be Matt Stafford. I think he's the best quarterback in the NFC. But but is it, is Matt Stafford's story kind of like what Tua is right now? Because Matt Stafford had a decade in Detroit with no team around him, and his his knock was, oh, he has a lot of yards, but he doesn't win any big games. Tua led the NFL. He was top three in every category, like Matt Stafford used to be without winning. Is 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 there any – any kind of leverage that he can have with saying like, okay, Matt's this good. I can be Matt. Uh, so I just got to see more from Tua. Like he's only played one full season. Then why would you take Jordan Love ahead of him? So th- that's a fair point. I just think the ceiling is higher for Jordan Love. Like I think Tua is just a good quarterback, not a great quarterback. Uh, the first half of the season, Jordan Love did not play well. Like he wasn't, he wasn't now how we view him. But when you have 20 total touchdowns to one interception and you win a playoff game, by the way, Something Tua has not done. I'm just, I just think there's higher upside with Jordan Love. The question we were all, I guess, posing yesterday was can Tua win you a Super Bowl, especially given the conference he plays and all the top quarterbacks he has to go through? Would you, I guess, gut feeling or would you bet on Tua leading the Dolphins to a Super Bowl ever? No. Um, you know what? Tua's kind of in a spot where Phillip Rivers was, where really good quarterback. And, you know, at times underappreciated, you know, like Philip Rivers, I think is underappreciated and had talented players around him. You know, Philip had LT for a bit, Antonio Gates, and, and you could go on throughout the years. And you look at the roadblocks in the way when you're playing in a conference with Tom Brady, with Peyton Manning, and then the other conference, right? You see what Drew Brees was able to do with the Saints. And then the Packers get Aaron Rodgers. There's just some really unmovable roadblocks right now in the AFC for Tua to get to that Super Bowl. And we haven't seen him win a playoff game yet. I know it's only been one one year where he's been in the postseason. I know the other year he was hurt and couldn't make it with Skylar Thompson. But if like, even if the Dolphins win a wild card game and then they're in the divisional round and then they also have to go to an AFC championship game, do you think they're going to be able to beat like let's say Joe Burrow in the division around and then Patrick Mahomes in the AFC championship game right now, I would say no. Hmm. I would say yes. Well, yeah, because we know this. You're a homer. <laughs> <laughs> I have them 17 to know this season. Yes. Uh, today is national drive through day. the last 17 day. years. I have. Today is national drive through day, uh, Gelb. Are you a drive through guy? Uh, not really because I live in the city, so pretty much right. everything is, is walking. Uh, but when I'm Back on Long Island visiting my parents, I really only drive through now for for Starbucks. Mm, oh. Drive through Starbucks, guy. You got, that, you got that big check. Interesting. You're a Starbucks guy, Gelb. I, I I didn't take you for that. I thought Perfect you were like peanut a butter uh, bar, and then a uh, large. I don't do the whole grande stuff, but uh, you know all the, the the different. I always mess that up. But uh, a large uh, cold brew, black. Oh, you're mm. the cold brew guy. We had this conversation black. yesterday. No milk, no sugar. No but is, is it is it is it iced coffee or cold brew? It's cold brew. There's a difference. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. This I guy's got not... network money. This guy's got network money. You just, I mean, he just gave you Starbucks drive through the cold brew. Not even yeah. just because you day. know pikers, pikers like me. We just get you know, okay, put put some ice in there if I'm I not, actually if I'm, uh, feeling warm because it was a little bit hotter. I ordered a vanilla bean creme frappuccino the other day, <sighs> and they the Starbucks people thought there was something wrong with me because it mm. wasn't my usual cold brew order. I was had a little sweet tooth the other day, so that's that's yeah. what I want. Like. Very oh, uh, very man. sorority girl of you. To, uh, that's to fine. I'm bean comfortable bean in my own skin. Solana. When when did you get that? When did you get the vanilla bean frap? Uh, last week at some point. No, no, no. But like, at what time in the day? Oh, it was, it was, it was later in the day. 
Okay. Because it's yeah. a vanilla milkshake. The That's people who go in and get yes. the vanilla bean frap 100%. at 9 a.m. to start their day with no coffee, just a milkshake, uh, blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I, I need to come clean on this show because I, I did so last week. Mm. Um, because it, what was it, Solana National Hot Dog Day? So it's funny, today's National Drive Through Day, but mm-hmm. last week, Hawk, was National Hot Dog Day. And if you remember exactly a year ago on that day, we had Zach Gelb yes. go to a it's water glizzies. dog stand in New York City to yeah. try a glizzy live on the show. And I brought yeah. it up last week on the show when you were off. I don't know if you heard his no. big reveal. Go ahead, you fraud. Uh, so I didn't actually go to the stand. I went to the, the local diner. I was not eating one of those dirty water dogs. National money, Are you by the way. kidding National me? National money. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, not at all. Ah, big money. You fraudulently represented a, a, a dirty water hot dog on this It was this a hot show. dog from New York City. It just didn't have the, the subway rats and the subway water in it. <laughs> wow. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty dirty, isn't it? Like, it is yeah, pun intended. Got us. Yeah, yeah, pun intended. <laughs> he got us. Wow. Oh, the three. I'm on video. The three of you didn't notice. So we we got had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got got. Wow. Because remember, if you remember, he didn't go downstairs. Like he was in his apartment, which had no like nothing in it. Also, right. And it looked like yeah, he was I looked in like I was in witness fail. protection. Uh huh. <laughs> and and he's like, oh yeah, I just got this downstairs from the dirty water dog or dirty water hot dog. Stand. You kept that. You kept that inside for a whole year, huh? Just pulled the uh, yeah, yeah. like you <laughs> did a radio lie. bit on us. I, I didn't really remember it all, but then when Solana brought it up, I'm like, ah, I could come clean. It's past the statute of limitations. Wow, <laughs> that is wild. So now we have to kind of just throw out everything that you said. I, I mean, obviously, uh, you would not take Jordan Love over to uh, you're yeah, just I, making conversation. I, I also lied about the time of day and the vanilla bean creme frappuccino. Now <laughs> that memory serves me right. It was more like 12:30 p.m. I think. I thought you were saying like 7 a.m. I had just woken up. <laughs> I was dying for a shake. Was it a late night? Or an early morning is the question. <laughs> Zach Gelb, Infinity Sports Network, Infinity Radio Network from the WFAN studios in New York. Thanks, Gelby. You got it, guys. Be well.